Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support of my major sponsors. And as you know, when it comes time for the very best in classic vehicle, home and contents insurance and an opportunity for you to sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club, where you can also list your car club or search for a car club, and the finest in oils and coolants, where the Penrite Technical Assistance Line is there to help you seven days a week. To contact these major sponsors, go to classicrestos.com.au And on this week's show, thanks to Carlisle Events here in Pennsylvania, United States of America, I am back to bring you one of the most significant Ford events on the planet. Welcome to the 2014 Carlisle Ford Nationals. When it comes time for the blue oval emblem that signifies the content of a Ford lover's bloodstream, you've seen nothing unless you have experienced the Carlisle Ford Nationals. Over 100 acres, 3,000 Fords, 50,000 enthusiasts over three big days. But this year, it's extra special because it's the 40th year of Carlisle events, the 50th anniversary of the Mustang and the 110th year of Ford. This year represents one of the largest years ever here at Carlisle. Everything made by Ford is welcome. Outside of Gate 1, around Building G, there are some really unique vehicles that span the lifetime of the Ford Motor Company. Building T plays host to the special edition Mustang display, a part of the Carlisle Ford Nationals 50 years of the Mustang celebration. And the variety in there would make any wild Mustang loose from any paddock. In the USA they do things big. This year, as another part of the amazing history of the Ford Mustang, there's a 500 foot long tent with one Mustang representing every year of production. How cool is that? And Building Y features the Carlisle Events first ever female enthusiast display of vehicles driven and maintained by female owners. And I am going over to that building. It doesn't get much bigger than this, the 2014 Carlisle Ford Nationals. The first cab off the rank, we have Gloria. How are you, Gloria? I'm fine, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, here in the, in the ladies' shed here, a beautiful 1963 Falcon. What can you tell us about this car? Well, this was my father's Falcon convertible. I was along when he purchased it. Uh, he always mentioned that he had a 62 uh, Ford Falcon four-door and a Rancher truck and he mentioned that he would like to get a Falcon convertible. And we drove by the showroom and he saw this car. We turned around and went back and he put $10 on the car and um, he bought it. Did you know that these Falcons uh, were down under in Australia? No, I didn't. Oh, well, absolutely. 1960, we had the, the same shape. But you guys had a couple of different variances over here, obviously. This one being a convertible, which I think is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. This was the first year that they made the convertible. It's a 170 a six-cylinder. Yep. Yep. That's good. Now, tell us, uh, over the time of you having the car, have you had to do much to it? Uh, no, we haven't. Uh, it has 75,000 original miles and a few maintenance over the years, of course, um, to keep the upkeep. But that's about the limit of it, and it's very good in gas. Well, that, that, that is awesome. And, I mean, to keep the, the dream alive, the tradition of this Falcon, you're a very proud owner, and I think it's really cool that you're looking after this car, Gloria. Yes, it, it has a lot of memories, family memories. Absolutely. So, Great. All right, well, look, thanks for taking the time out and being on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Well, thank you, Fletch, too, and that's you have a good day. I will. Thanks, Gloria. Mm -hmm. Moving through the ladies' area, as we do here at Carlisle, welcome to the show, Lisa. Thank you. Nice to be here, Fletch. Five-litre Mustang, 1991 model. How cool are you? A cop car. What's the deal? Um, it's a 1991 Georgia State Patrol Mustang. Uh, retired in October of 98. And uh, I just love the old police Mustangs. Are there many states in America where you, where you can't drive it like this? 
Um, actually, no. A lot of times decals and lights have to be covered. Um, but I'm from Maryland, and we can cover. We don't have to cover anything there. You can just drive around like this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't help myself if I had something like this. I I'd have to be out and about, and when I saw someone I knew, I'd have to come up behind them and put the lights on. It's very tempting. <laughs> very tempting. <laughs> well, actually, you're helping law enforcement because as soon as people see you on the road, they're going to slow down. Yes, they do. They yeah. slow down quite a bit. Um, matter of fact, they do a major brake check a lot of times. Wow. Yes, they do. You've got a good engine there, the 5 liter Windsor. Uh, tremendous little engine, aren't they? Yeah, it's a, uh, basically a 5.0. It's a small block 302. Yep. Got about 225 horsepower. Um, yep. Back in 1991, that was a decent amount of horsepower. Especially in a car that's, uh, well, a compact size yes. as well. Yes, it's probably one of the lightest Mustangs ever built. Did the police do much to the 5 liter or were they pretty well stock standard? Uh, no, they actually have what they call a special service package. A lot of heavy duty parts, uh, reinforced floor pans, the rear seat, suspension. Ah, interesting stuff. We take a look on the inside, all the gears still there. Boy, they, they really had these things decked out, didn't they? Yes, they did. And Georgia was a state that used most the most amount of equipment in them um, between uh, the radar and the video equipment, which a lot of states did not have the video equipment back then. And you could go and get a job with NASA with this. <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> yeah. And the police radios, everything still works and everything? Uh, everything works except for the radio um, because that is analog and now everything's digital. Okay. Lisa, talking about the interior being decked out, I mean, you know, you've gone the full hog here. You've even got the donut up on the dash. Yes, yes, and the donut box on the passenger seat. And thank you so much for coming from Australia, Fletch, and doing the show and that. We really do appreciate it. Welcome here to America. Thank you, Lisa. My pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. How busy is it in here? One of the most awesome attractions of a Carlisle event is your opportunity to come to the Car Corral, where it's your chance to buy the vehicle that you've always dreamed about. So Wendell, tell us, what's making you sell this glorious 1969 Galaxy? Okay, Fletch, um, I have a nice car collection down in Georgia, uh, and uh, we continue to restore cars and buy cars, and so we have to, we have to part with them sometimes. Do you get emotionally attached to any of them? Well, absolutely. Sure do. Well, tell us the deal with this 69 Galaxy here. What's the story on this one, Wendell? Well, I bought this car 15 years ago and put it in my car collection. And uh, we have uh, enjoyed it to take on week's trips with our local car club. So many times we've been all over the southeastern United States in this little car, and we've loved it. It has power steering, brakes, and air, and that makes my wife like it uh, a lot better than those others that do not, that doesn't have it. Under the hood, what's lurking there? It's a 390. A 390, just so synonymous from the year as well, isn't it? Right. They built a 352, a 390, and a couple of 429s. I love the interior, Wendell. It's in beautiful condition. Yeah. Well, this car's never been restored. It's never had uh, any paint work or uh, mechanical work uh, other than just maintenance. Wendell, absolute pleasure interviewing you here at the Car Corral here at Carlisle. Thanks for being on today's show. Uh, you bet. Fletch, uh, it's been good talking with you. And... Uh, uh, I like your uh, name of your business, the Classic Restos. Mine is uh, Fun Time Classic Cars. There's <laughs> an opportunity for you. Good on you, Wendell. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. For the best in insurance for your home and contents and classic vehicle, whether it be bike, car or truck, and an opportunity to sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club, along with the finest in oils and coolants, where the Penrite Technical Assistance Line can help you seven days a week. Go to classicrestos.com.au for more contact information. Stay right where you are. There's more classic Fords from Carlisle coming your way right after this.
Welcome back. You know, one of my most favourite buildings at Carlisle Events has to go down as Building G because every event it hosts something very special inside. This year, being the 110th anniversary of Ford, there's bound to be something extra special awaiting us. Time now to go take a closer look. Moving through Building G, and I know why they call it G, because when you walk in here you go, oh G, isn't that right Richard? That's correct, exactly. <laughs> okay, moving through, 1957, the Battlebird. Yes. Tell us about this car, Richard. Well Fletch, th these cars, uh, Ford built two of these cars in 1957 to destroy the competition. Uh, there was a thing in 57 called Daytona Speed Week, which still exists in a different form, but back then they raced on the beach. So Ford built these cars specially to run at the beach to go as fast as they possibly could, and the one car, this car, went 204 miles an hour on the beach in 1957. They're, they're highly modified a lot of aluminum parts, the engine is set back and down in the chassis to give it a lower center of gravity. They hired the best race drivers they could, Danny Eames, Chuck Day, the, the best guys of the time to run these cars. 204 miles an hour on the beach, it sounds insane, I mean that's not giving the driver any time at all to check out the surf. <laughs> Okay, tell us about engine up front. What's going on there? All right, this is a 312 cubic inch uh, Y-block Ford engine. It's bored and stroked to 348 cubic inch. It has Hillborn fuel injection. Uh, it's probably making 380 to 400 horsepower. Just amazing, 1957. We're talking state-of-the-art technology too. Talk about research and development at its very best. They would have used these cars as the platform Absolutely. to base performance, to then go into the cars that went onto the street, and it really, in a lot of circumstances, got better from 1957. Absolutely. The sad thing is that after building these cars, Ford dropped out of racing in mid-1957. They signed a racing ban with the other three, the big three, and these cars actually wound up with Andy Hotton, who ran Dearborn Steel Tubing. He, he, he built a lot of race cars for Ford, and he campaigned the two of them very successfully in the, the Midwest, uh, like at Road America, Ontario, places like that. Absolutely unbelievable. You know, this is the thing about coming along to the United States and mixing it with guys like this, seeing the cars, the, the real article, the genuine article, back from the time. It's really hard to put words to. Speaking of which, the second car on our left here, what's going on there, Richard? All right, that's a 1957 Ford Custom Tudor. Uh, they built, Ford built about 600 supercharged full-size Fords in 1957 out of a million 200,000 Fords built. They were built largely for NASCAR homologation, and uh, maybe there's 150 left, that's it. Now, this car, I was, I bought it when I was, actually my dad bought it for me when I was 14 years old. It was sitting in a tobacco barn in Tennessee with a blown up engine. Uh, they had been running moonshine with it. Found in a tobacco barn. Talk about smoking. Yes, exactly. So I said to my dad, Dad, this is a really cool car. Can you buy it for me? I'll be driving in a couple of years. And my dad was a good guy. Yeah. He said, well, we'll go look at it. Yeah. So the guy wanted $200 for it. My dad offered him 150, so we dragged it home for 150 bucks. All right, the tears are starting now, mate. <laughs> it's been great talking to you. These blokes can, well, they can excite you with their stories. They can also depress you. Richard, <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on today's show. Fletch, it's great to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you. Your, your cars are amazing, and uh, I want to thank you on the behalf. It's guys like you that make the Carlisle event what it is. Thanks. Time for John. How are you, John? Good, Fletch. How are you doing? Good, mate. Where have you travelled from? Uh, originally Philadelphia, but now in the Harrisburg area. Uh, that's good, and you, you did it in the Fairlane, right? Yes. Isn't it nice? Not trailered, driven, right? Yes, driven. This is a gorgeous car. Tell us a story. Thank you, Fletch. Well, it's a car I picked up in 1995 and uh, just stored it uh, until I could gather the parts needed. Started the restoration in around 2004, finished it up in uh, 2008. We put a uh, 427 Ford in it, 
Ford and Stroke to 496. We put a Ford 9 inch in it, and we also put a TKO 600 five speed in it, so we have the uh, the uh, overdrive when needed. Beautiful. And what about the rear gears? What ratio have you gone? Uh, we're running a 370 gear oh, in, the, in the rear. That's nice. So nice and quick off the line, and into fifth on the on the turnpike, and you're away. Yes, very much so. Yeah, that's a that's a real sensible combination. The ram induction you've got. Goodness, John, that'd that'd suck the house off its foundations. Uh, well, it takes a lot of uh, cool air to uh, make the, hor the horsepower. Yeah, you see different variations. You see them up into the plenum chamber, up the top of the plenum, or what you've done with the with the ram pipes. It it really it looks cranky. Very good, thank you. We, we uh, wanted to mirror the original Thunderbolt image, yeah. and uh, so we did as much as we could to uh, imitate that. They used to do some things with these cars, though. I mean, they'd cut them and they'd they put the big rail up front. They'd make gases out of them. Yes, they used to. Yes, very much so. But I, I wanted to stick with the stock yeah. stock lock. Back in the super stock era, where cars were bought brand new from the factory, you take them home, put a bigger pan on them, put some slicks on them, and go racing. Yes, yes, that's what they did with these things back yeah. in the '60s. It's been a pleasure catching up with you, John. And before uh, I do go, just one last comment on the interior of this car that's that's just beautiful once again it's uh, a duplicate of the factory thunderbolt interiors with it down to the tack and the seats and everything else yeah. to match before you go the color of the red what is it okay it's called a vintage burgundy x is what ford called it back in the era so it's even an original color yes so there's no mucking around with these blokes they don't do things in halves they go all the way right <laughs> yes yeah. yes we do Good on thanks john thank you fletch so, John, tell us, what's the go with the plate? My other car is a Studebaker. Well, we all have a friends who like to pick on you. And um, he put that on there. He was a gentleman that helped me build the car. And he said, if I ever take it off, he'll shoot me. <laughs> but you still call him a gentleman? Yes. <laughs> you guys are just too friendly to each other. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Or I could say everybody has a smart-ass friend. <laughs> Bookings are now being taken for Fletch Tours 2015 to the delightful Carlisle region of Pennsylvania and experiencing a Carlisle event, along with the Motown city of Detroit and its region. For more information, go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon. You're watching the 2014 Carlisle Ford Nationals. Back with more right after this. The 2014 Carlisle Ford Nationals, we've got Ken now, the event manager. How are you, Ken? Very good, very good. Busy day. Busy day, Fletch. That's the way. This is Friday. The cars are loading up. Tomorrow's going to be a huge day, but it's looking good so far. Oh, yeah. We're looking at 3,000-plus uh, cars tomorrow, and uh, today it's already very strong. We're at 2,600 cars, so it's going to be a crazy busy day. we got the Mustang birthday party later tonight, and then... Uh, with the rest of the show going on, it's just going to be jamming for the rest of the weekend. So. And there's, there's no doubt about it, you've been thrown into the deep end here. I mean, this would have to go down in history as probably one of the largest Ford events here at Carlisle this year. Absolutely. It's our uh, 20th anniversary for the uh, Carlisle Ford Nationals on top of the 40 years of Carlisle events. Um, so it's a really big anniversary as well as the 50-year Mustang, yep. 110 plus years of Ford. Yep. Um, and everything else that's going on, there's a lot of little mini anniversaries that are going on. The AmeriCorps guys are celebrating the death of AmeriCorps. Some of the uh, Thunderbird and Fairlane groups are celebrating stuff back there with their own. So it's a really, really big year for the event. And this one's going to be a record year already. So Ken, this must have taken you every day of the last 12 months to pull this together. Absolutely. It's not only a 12 month, but it's a multi-year thing. The guys down in Building T, we've been working on that for at least the last 18 months to yep. two years. Yep. Um, some of these other displays we've been working on pretty much since the uh, end of the show last year. So it's it's been busy. So. There's just so much to do here at a Carlisle event. The itinerary is so comprehensive. The TV show just jumps across the top and just shows you some of it. There's so many new things too, like for example this year down in Building Y. We've got the female entrance, the enthusiast 
that are maintaining and drive their own cars, which is a nice touch. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big thing for Ford, and also it's a big thing for us too. We obviously had the Women's Oasis, but we want to see some of them also get involved in their, I mean, they, their husband might have a build, their boyfriend might have a build, or they might have a build themselves, and now they can actually, I mean, see that, I mean, their peers, I mean, that are female are bringing uh bringing their cars to the show as well. Absolutely, and Building G is always a highlight here at a Carlisle event as well, the old dealership down there yeah. near, near Gate 1. It's a really, really, really big display this year. It's 110 cars, 20 inside, 90 outside to celebrate the 110 plus years of Ford. That's awesome. Need we say more? Let's get on with the show. And uh, Ken, always good catching up with you, mate. Got to take my hat off to this bloke, huh? <laughs> to all the event managers here at Carlisle. This is Carlisle Events. The place on the planet that does host the largest car shows in the world. It's all about the cars, the people, and the excitement. Absolutely, Fletch. Absolutely. And thanks for coming out. That's okay. My, my pleasure, Ken. <laughs> thanks. Moving through the first day, Friday. Huge day. We have Sue. How are you, Sue? Just fine. Thank you, Fret Fletch. Oh, that's good, Orgy. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a stumble there, but she got it out. Now, <laughs> Sue, you have a very significant car. We can't do classic restos here in Carlisle this year without an interview with a Mustang. Now you've got a 64 and a half Mustang. Tell us about the car. Uh, my husband bought the car brand new when he was 20 years old and uh, was uh, very fortunate to find one because they were not easily available. So he would have liked to have had a convertible but there was only a hardtop on the lot. So he chose that and was um, very excited about having a brand new car. It was his first brand new car. Still got it today in 2014. Yes, it was our daily driver until 1978. And the most uh, we ever had in this car were three children, one German Shepherd and a bass fiddle. <laughs> At a bass, don't go anywhere without your fiddle. Um, <laughs> now the thing is too, Sue, being a family car and what it's been through, it's in remarkable condition. It's absolutely gorgeous. My husband restored it about 10 years ago. Wow. So it's um, no more no more fiddle. N no, no more fiddles. <laughs> no more dogs either. <laughs> We're hosting the 260 cubic inch V8 up front. Gorgeous black interior. The paint's beautiful. It's in the 500 foot long tent here at Carlisle this year. One Mustang for every year of production by the Ford Motor Company, which it's an all first and well obviously because of the anniversary of the 50 years of Mustang, but how awesome and you're the first car obviously in the row. Yes, we are. Sue, an absolute pleasure interviewing you. Thank you. Thank you, Fletch. See this tree here? Absolutely nothing to do with the next scene. But a Carlisle event is never complete without going to the street parade happening on a Saturday night. It takes a strong car event to have the power to block off streets. It also takes power to attract thousands of people. This is the 2014 Carlisle Ford Nationals Saturday Night Street Parade, where over 400 cars, out of the 3,000 in attendance, fill some of the streets of downtown Carlisle to keep the locals entertained. Relax for a moment and enjoy some Carlisle Street Parade action. How was that? Just some of the 2014 Carlisle Ford Nationals in beautiful Carlisle, Pennsylvania, United States of America. It really is about the cars, the people and the excitement. And there's going to be more on next week's show. Keep in mind that ClassicRestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show, getting Classic Restos merchandise, finding out information on seeing yourself on a Fletch tour in 2015, and of course my contact details for my major sponsors as well. As I say at the end of every show until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, thank you for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week.